So I'm currently going through and redoing a lot of my older tutorials because as we all know, technology tends to change and update rapidly. And I wanna do my best to try to give you the most up-to-date information. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. And I hope that you find all of my other tutorials useful on your VR content creation journey. And if you've been with me a while, Thank you for putting up with me and don't mind the dust. Plus, sometimes it can be good to brush up on the basics. So let's start from square one. How do I capture footage from my VR headset so I can use it for recordings or for live streams? This video is divided into two parts, depending on if you want to record a Quest native game, meaning a game that's directly on your Quest headset, or if you want to be able to record or stream a Steam VR game, which you can also do with your Quest 2. The process being the same, however, you would just use something to access your desktop, like AirLink or virtual desktop, link cable, etc. If you're here specifically for native Quest live streaming, there are some caveats to this, which I've made a whole other video dedicated to. So so if you're looking for specifically a Quest native live streaming tutorial, check out this video. Just kidding, it's here. <laughs> However, if you're just wanting to learn how to record video, keep watching. I'll include timestamps in the description below so you can jump around to whatever spots you need to, depending on what you're looking for, which I highly recommend doing. My recommendation for recording video for Quest native games is simply using the Quest's built-in headset recorder. To get there, simply go to the share button, recording, then it'll ask you whether you'd like to include the microphone or not. When you are recording, you'll see a red dot in your peripheral vision. This dot will not show up in your footage, but if it annoys you, you can always turn it off by going to settings, system, and toggling the slider under display. However, I recommend keeping it on as sometimes the recording may just stop without you knowing it. Recording using Quest tools by default records in a square resolution, or 1024 by 1024, 30 FPS, at 5 million as the bitrate. But you can increase the quality in just a couple of steps using SideQuest. If you haven't heard of SideQuest, it's basically a must-have tool for Quest users wanting more content than what the current store offers. But there are also some really neat things you can do with it to improve both game and recording quality overall. Make sure you download SideQuest and follow the instructions carefully on their website to get developer mode enabled. Otherwise, it just won't work. When everything's all set, plug your headset into your PC, turn it on. Then on the SideQuest top menu, click this box here to run ADB commands, then click custom command. Input the following commands one line at a time, pressing run command for each. I'll put these in the description below for easy copy and paste. Now the in-headset recorder will capture with the new settings, in this case, changing the aspect ratio from square to 1440 by 1080, 72 FPS, and the bitrate to 30 million. Feel free to adjust these settings to your preferences, but just know if you crank things up too high, you may cause performance issues both in-headset with your game and visually in your recording. To get the files from your Quest, simply plug it into your PC, turn on your Quest, you may have to confirm your garden setup and you'll get a pop-up prompt asking for permission to allow your computer to access your Quest data. Make sure you select Allow. On the PC, navigate over to your Quest 2 and you'll find your footage in the Oculus slash Video Shots folder. If you delete files from here, they will also be removed from your headset. You can also technically cast to your PC by going to oculus.com slash casting on your browser. Sign into the same Facebook account that you have linked to your Quest then in your quest, go to share, cast, and select computer. Through the video player on your browser, you can choose to have your microphone picked up or not, as well as having a wider screen crop if you'd like. From here, you'd simply add your browser as a Windows source and your broadcasting software. I do have to warn you, however, that compared to the in-headset recorder, the quality will be a lot lower and you may struggle with audio latency issues, meaning the game audio or your microphone audio is off from the actual video. In my experience, the Quest has a pretty terrible microphone, and there isn't a way currently to make your microphone louder than the in-game volume, so I actually like to record my microphone audio separately on my computer. You can use whatever default voice recording app is included with your computer, or you can go with my personal preference, Audacity. For microphone choice, I use the Antlion Audio Mod Mic Wireless so I can continue to stay completely untethered from my PC. It also comes with a magnetic base station that attaches the microphone to your headset, as well as a USB dongle that attaches to your PC and has pretty good range. Usually I'll do some sort of sync, I'll clap in game while saying clap or pointing and reading menu options so that when I edit, I'll be able to easier sync the audio together. 
Meta has said that they're currently working on some better recording solutions when it comes to Quest Native, but they've been kind of saying that for a while now, so fingers crossed and hopefully we'll see it sometime this year. Anyway, for a more in-depth video on live streaming with Quest Native, spoiler, you might be a little disappointed, you can check this video out here. The beauty of recording and streaming with a Steam VR game is that you have so many options. For Quest users specifically, I'm not going to go over the details on how to be able to use Steam with your Quest 2. Just use AirLink Virtual Desktop or your Link Cable, and I've actually created a video already if you need extra help, which you can find right there. There are three different methods I currently use to capture my headset view. One is simply adding the game's EXE to your broadcasting software. The second is OpenVR Capture, and the third is Liv's First Person Stabilizer. I'll quickly go over the benefits of each, though know that all of them are free. The simplest method, as I mentioned, is simply opening the game and adding it as a game capture source in your broadcasting software. Some games offer their own built-in stabilizer or smoother, which is usually not on by default, so make sure you check the game settings to see if that's available. With most games, though, you may not have as much control. Certain games lock the first-person view to come out of one eye only, so the ability to customize may be absent or extremely limited. Next is the OpenVR Capture plugin, which comes with Streamlabs OBS, or you can download it separately for OBS Studio, which I'll put a link to in the description below. You can choose from a couple of presets depending on your headset type, as well as which eye you prefer to be the dominant one. You may have to stretch and crop the source a bit to get it where you'd like it. If you're using Streamlabs, you can add it as a source right here. If you're using OBS Studio, simply download it from the GitHub. Make sure OBS is closed and extract the file into your OBS Studio folder. Typically, see Program File OBS Studio. Make sure to replace any files if prompted. With SteamVR on and running, click on Add Source and select OpenVR Capture from the list. One of the benefits or downsides of OpenVR Capture, depending on what you're looking for, is that your stream or recording will be able to see everything, including UI elements you may have open, like chat, your Steam VR dashboard, or your desktop, for example. This can be useful or annoying depending on what you're trying to capture. Finally, we have my favorite, and that is Liv. Liv has a first-person stabilizer that takes whatever game you currently have open and adds smoothing or stabilizing to it, with a bunch of options when it comes to resolution, zoom, smoothing, and main eye preferences. You can find Liv for free on the Steam Store, simply download and install it, open it up, and select the first-person stabilizer option. With the game you want to capture and the Liv stabilizer open, Go to your broadcasting software and click Add Source, Game Capture, then select Liv's First Person Stabilizer as your window. To adjust the settings, once the stabilizer is launched, head in headset and mouse over the green circle on the floor until it fills. So with all the praise, why wouldn't you want to use the Liv Stabilizer option? While it works with most Steam VR games at the time of this recording, it will not work with games with easy anti-cheat, and we're still working out some kinks as they appear. If you want your stream to be able to see chat, you may also have to use something like OpenVR Capture instead. So you may want to have one of the previous options as a backup, just in case. I'm going to give you some extra tips here specifically when it comes to your broadcasting software. These tips aren't necessarily specific to VR recordings, but I've found them very handy in the long run. The first, record in MKV format whenever you can. If you've ever had one of those heartbreaking moments where you've recorded half an hour to an hour of video, only to have your computer or OBS crash, the good news is that everything you've shot up until that point is fun. My second tip is that I like to separate my audio tracks because occasionally I'll find that no matter how many test recordings I did, my microphone volume is way lower than the in-game audio volume or vice versa. What this does is it allows you to pull the video into your editing software like DaVinci Resolve here, and it splits the desktop and microphone audio into two different tracks, allowing you to raise or lower the volume for each as needed. So in my OBS, for example, I have my desktop audio or the in-game audio going to one track and my microphone on the other. Although you can add more audio sources into separate tracks if you have them, up to six. I hope this video helped you whether you want to start creating game reviews, funny TikToks, or live streaming VR. And know that if you need any further help when it comes to recording or live streaming VR, I got you. If you have any questions or maybe you would like to see me create a tutorial on something I haven't covered yet, let me know in the comments below. As always, keep on creating and never lose that drive to improve. I'll see you on the next one.